When you search Wikipedia for the Brantford Alexanders, you find the story of junior ice hockey in Ontario from 1978 to 1984. What you don't find is the story of the 1977 Allen Cup champions, the Brantford Alexanders. Peter Ham was born in Brantford, Ontario in 1944. He lived most of his life in East Ward as a young man. He absolutely loved hockey and still does. He couldn't wait until November to hit. Back then, the ice used to freeze much earlier. They would get on the canal in East Ward and skate over to Mohawk Lake. East Ward was a wonderful neighborhood to grow up in. It was lower demographic with not too many frills, but lots of great athletes and businessmen came out of East Ward. Peter had an ambition to play hockey as far as he could go. That was interfered with when he got a car at 16 and discovered other things. Peter Ham played competitive hockey until 1971, mostly in industrial and commercial leagues around Brantford. This kept his passion for hockey rekindled. Peter Ham is currently the owner and president of the 2008 Allen Cup champions, the Brantford Blasts. Peter, a.k.a. Needle Nose Noonan, was inducted in the Brantford and Area Sports Hall of Recognition in 2010. When people think of senior hockey in Brantford, they think of Peter Ham. His passion and love for the game is well known throughout Brantford. This episode of Old Time Hockey Adventures in Podcasting is sponsored by BHI Brantford, Ball Hockey International, BHI, home of ball hockey in Brantford. Welcome to the ice, Brantford's own Peter Ham. In 1974, my old coach, Mike King, who was a Damon Runyon character and just one of the great sports legends of this town, he helped build the Brantford Red Sox. He was there in the heyday as the general manager, along with uh, Judge Larry Pinnell. Mike was a mentor of mine. He was a veteran, a Second World War guy. He had some really unique, fundamental great uh, traits to his life as far as responsibility, commitment, living up to your word. He taught me a lot, and he was a great general manager. Mike asked me to join the team in 1974 to promote the team. I was given 25% ownership in the team for my, for my skill, which I had gained a reputation for being a good promoter. So Mike and Dick and Tom Redman, three Irishmen and me, half Irish, owning and operating this team in 1974-75. We had a, a good year. We made the playoffs, but it wasn't a great team. It was a good team. I knew that it needed more uh, It needed more financial commitment than the four of us could provide. So I told the guys, let's sell it, get someone in here with some, uh, some money, and see what happens. We're going to break for a quick promotional message. When asked to describe Peter Hamm, Will Van Uenhausen, Director of Community Relations for the Brantford Blast, had this to say. When people think of senior hockey in Brantford, the first two things that come to their minds are the Brantford Blast and Peter Ham. He has such a tremendous passion and love for the game and has really built a great organization here in Brantford. I'm proud to work alongside him as my mentor and I'm constantly learning and picking up on his wealth of knowledge and experience. We now return you to Old Time Hockey, Adventures in Podcasting. So I sold the team to a, to a man, a doctor, a, a local doctor, a Dr. David Carl was his name. We got a, a large sum of money. We split that up four ways. The other guys said goodbye. And I was uh, quite happy not being in it at that time. And the, owner, the, the new owner, Carl, came back and said, I, will you run it? So I said, yes, I will, and we, and we struck a deal, and I said, this is the budget we'll require to, to be a, an Allen Cup champion, to go after it anyway to compete. And we, we just took off, and, uh, and it worked. I think we had over 15 either NHL, WHA, American League players on that team, some really terrific players. So in our first season, Barry Flyers kind of ruled the OHA Senior A back then. In our first or second round, we knocked off the Barry Flyers. And to me, 
that was the real highlight of the season because I really had grown to dislike them, good and evil. We were good, they were evil. We went on to, uh, to uh, beat Thunder Bay. Then we had to play Woodstock. They were the Continental League champions. And then we had to go to Newfoundland to play the Eastern Canadian Championship in St. John's, Newfoundland against the St. John Caps. We beat them. We came home. You used to play a best of seven right in your own building. And we faced the Spokane Jets. And uh, we beat them in five or six games to win the Allen Cup. So that first year, being called the Branford Alexanders, I, I missed something there. I, I forgot to tell you, we changed the name from Branford Foresters to Branford Alexanders. My friend Bob Markovich owned a, a, a huge nightclub at the time of Bradford called the Alexanders. It's still in existence. It's not the same as it used to be, but, uh, but he was a hockey fan. He played with me, and he sponsored us. He kicked in several thousand bucks that year, and we named it the Bradford Alexanders. So that was how that era began. It was the first time Bradford ever won a national hockey championship uh, in 75 years of, of documented hockey in this town, so it was it was quite a quite a eventful year, a real pleasure. Uh, the guys were great, and uh, we had a 30. I think it was our 33rd anniversary. We we spent together here at the 100th Allen Cup that we hosted, and this year uh, is the 40 40th anniversary of that team. And uh, we're going to get the guys together again at uh, at a game here. So, so it's it's great. We stay in touch, not uh, constantly, but we stay in touch, and it's it's nice because uh, you know life moves on and uh, and it doesn't wait for anybody. And and some great players have passed away at a at a younger age than you would anticipate. Freddie Speck, who is uh, who was an incredible hockey player. Uh, 5'9", 170 pounds, but he played like a 6'3", you know, 230-pound guy. He was just an unbelievable player. Matter of fact, when he graduated from junior, he went to the American League. He was a Detroit Red Wings chattel. But he went to play in Baltimore for the Baltimore Skipjacks, I think they were called at the time. He won, as a rookie, he won the Rookie of the Year Award. He won, he won the MVP Award, and he won the Scoring Championship. I mean, is that incredible? It was very difficult to make the NHL back then. There wasn't that many teams. I think there was a lot of politics involved also back then. I don't know. I'm just kind of surmising because we had some great players come here at 26 and 27 years of age who couldn't go back to the NHL. They didn't want them anymore. So it was our good fortune. Jack Eagers, they called him Smokey because he could shoot the puck like Bobby Hull. He just had an incredible uh, shot. And we'd use him on the point on the power play, and he, he just, it, was, it looked like a black line. I, I'm just going back to some of the great players. Jerry Gray was our goaltender. He was in the Detroit Red Wings organization and played in Detroit for a while. He was a Branford guy, so we were very lucky to have Jerry come back to Branford and, and uh, play on that team. And our backup goalie was Stan Juarez, who's still a prominent figure in the sports community in this city. Harry Smith was uh, Jay Silverheels, a.k.a. Jay Silverheels, a.k.a. Tonto. But Harry Smith was from the reserve and a uh, rather large family. And Harry Smith was a great lacrosse player. And uh, that's how he got introduced to the movies. But uh, Guy Smith was his nephew. And Guy Smith could play a whole game. He was that uh, fit. He was one of those guys. And I'm talking about them because Freddie Speck died this year. Or, or early last year, and Guy Smith died at the age of 45. Uh, he was teaching at the University of New Hampshire and coaching, and he walked outside and had a heart attack and, and died. And he was the most fit person. I mean, the guy could play 60 minutes. I, you, you very rarely see a guy like that. So Steve Atkinson played on that team. Steve Atkinson had played seven years in Buffalo for the Sabres. They let him go. He came here and played for us. Uh, just a, a, a tremendous athlete. He died 12 years ago uh, at a very young age of a heart attack. So I like to have the reunions. Several other of us have escaped death by the grace of God, and uh, it's great to get the boys back together. It really is. It's a feeling that, you know, it's a feeling you can't buy.